Good evening. This is the open meeting of the Hot Hopkins and Conservation Commission. It's being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, through the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we are complying with the executive order that suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all per to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. All members of public body, bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The executive order, which you can find posted with agenda materials this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as the public body makes provisions through the adequate alternative means to ensure interested members of the public are provided reasonable access to the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting of the Hopkins and Conservation Commission is convened by video conference via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Additionally, the meeting may also be, is also being broadcast by HCAM through uh, its channels and platforms. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that others may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website via the web meeting calendar, unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some of the ground rules for the effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite board members to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Also, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name and please state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comments as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their name and address. Once the chair has a list of all public commenters, I will call on each name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be a roll call vote. I'll call on each member, at which time you'll state your name and your vote. Okay. Uh, let's see, so there's no one waiting. So why don't we get going with the work session items, Don? Um, okay. Actually, I've um, number four. I see is a is a repeat because I actually have it listed as an agenda item. I actually have it listed as number five on the agenda. So if you want to disregard number four on the work session? Okay. So documents for review. We have the Hopkinton DPW. Um, this is for the record, uh, the Lake Maspinock, the order conditions, um, the draft denial. So yes. I, I, I took a look at those uh, at that document, Don. I thought it was uh, very well done. So I appreciate you and uh, Rebecca working that, on that. I think you guys did a great job. Do we have any comments from the commission on the denial? I looked at it, this is Melissa. Um, I looked at it as well, and I also thought that it captured all the concerns of the commission um, 
and the points that we went through. So I don't have any additional comments. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Mrs. Chad, I also looked at it um, and I thought it was an excellent piece. Congratulations to those who worked on it. Thank you, Ed. Um, it, Don, just as an administrative item where we, I think Ted said he wasn't going to be participating tonight. Is that correct? Uh, might have. I, I don't recall that. Okay. I know in the past he had some concerns. So, yeah, he might not be attending. Okay. Um, so, I think the denial on the order conditions for Lake Maspinog is good to go, Don. Um, Fitzpatrick. Okay, so I'll have it um, with the electronic signatures of all seven members, and then we'll process it this week for issuance. That'd be great. Thank you. And we have Fitzpatrick for the Color Road, the COC draft. That looked fine to me. There was um, one question um, I wanted to bring to the commission's attention regarding the as-built plan we got for that. Um, we had asked for a revised plan to show the PIB and then um, bring it up the revised one. Right, and okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, All right, where is the... I'm not, oh God. I'm not seeing... Hold on a sec. I don't believe it. God, I hate this. Um... 1671. 1671. I know we get a revised ASBO plan. I just <laughs> basically the ASBO plan showed the PIB, but it didn't call out as a PIB. It, it listed it as a st existing stone wall and existing vegetation plants. Okay, so why don't, we, uh, why don't we just have them revise the plan, identifying it as a PIB? Yeah, because uh, that was the language in the, uh, in the order. Um, it basically wanted it to be um, labeled as such. Yep. So I think that makes sense. So um, okay. So would you guys want to sign it, so, and then we won't issue it until we get the revised plan with the language on it? Yes, please. I think that makes sense, Don. Okay. Does that, does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. Okay. Fine with me. All right, Don, you ready to move on? Yes. Okay, so new applications to be advertised for June 23rd. We have Bryant, Zero Downey Place. It's a notice of intent. Bumbaka, 17 West Elm. Request for determination. Um, and I think on that date, we will also be um, hearing from Franklin Solar and Leonard Street, Mr. Petrosi, correct? Yes, those got continued. Those got continued, okay. And also, uh, you'd be looking at, um, I've got the uh, draft agenda. Um, 70 Spring Street got extended as well. So that would right, be on yep, the- Right, single family home. Okay. Correct, right. yep. Right. That wasn't on tonight's agenda though, was it? No, that'll be on for the 23rd. Okay. Okay. Uh, just for the record, new applications. Um, we have Morrison, one Piazza Lane. It's a request for determination of applicability. Jackson, 132 Clinton Street, a notice of intent. 
and Bloom 23 Woody Island Road, another request for determination of applicability. So uh, we have those in the pipeline. Um, so I don't know if anyone from Pulte is here. I did have them listed on number four for the work session, but I also have them as number five on the. Uh, yeah, on the, I haven't. Uh, I haven't. Is there anyone from Pulte? Um, in the audience, I don't see anyone. Yes, uh, John Engdahl from Pulte Homes. Oh, hi, Mr. Engdahl. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Good, thank you. I apologize. I couldn't get a audio in a video working, so you just get my voice. That's yeah. okay. We're not going to be able to see your uh, good-looking face tonight, I guess. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, okay i heard you look a little bit like george clooney is that true um not according to my wife no okay <laughs> all right so um why don't you give us uh you know there was you know i i think the commission is aware of the uh um impacts that we had at the site related to the rain event um, and the uh, sediment um, in the, uh, you know, entrained in the, in the stormwater that impacted the wetlands. Um, so if you can just kind of give us an overview of where you folks are and what kind of mitigation has been implemented um, since this occurred, that would be helpful. Well, I, I'm going to, um... It's Mike Rosati, who is our environmental monitor. Um, he has been going back and forth with Don and also instructing us on uh, mitigation plans. Um, so I'll let him give you the details. Mike, are okay. you... Is, is he on the line? He is. Okay. If he can figure out how to hey. talk. Mr. Rosati, are you with us? Well, maybe, I know he's on the call, I, he just must be in trouble. Um, so I'll give you kind of the overview. Yeah, he, he's actually on the line. Um, he's muted though, so um, I don't know. Okay, why don't you, why don't you start and uh, when he gets his. Okay, so we, we obviously had a discharge. Um, there, were, there were a couple of areas that were taken, um, but I think a lot of it had to do with um, our larger retention pond at the, at the bottom of the job. Um, apparently there, there's some old rock fill under there, some of the water um, got through that. We think that's a majority of the issue. Um, I, I, that's the uh, area. So um, we've we've corrected that with uh, different layers of material. Uh, I believe Mike had data engineering out there to look at it as well. Uh, we beefed up the erosion control. Um, uh, Mike had sent um, Don an email with a list of the things that we anticipate doing, have done to, to this point. Um, we also contacted um, New England Environmental or the new company name. Um, to WCA. Yeah. To to look at the wetland area and give us their opinion on that. And there is a letter uh, associated with a package. I, I don't know if you've had a chance to review that letter or not. I received it on, on Monday, and I haven't had a chance to review it yet, but I do have it you know, posted to announce. Yeah, I, I haven't seen that either. Uh... So it, it's Basically, I don't know if you know Mickey Marcus, uh, the environmental scientist and the company used to be New England Environmental, now it's SWCA. 
Um, we had them get the wetlands and, and give us recommendations for remediation. Okay, and those recommendations have been implemented? Uh, some have and some are up for discussion. And by up for discussion, what, what do you mean by that? What, what the conservation would like us to do okay. in, in addition to these recommendations. Okay. Um, so I think yeah, Mr. Rosati is unmuted at this point. Mr. Rosati, do you have anything else to add? I'll take that as a no. Um, He's probably talking. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, Jeff, I, I think the to... conservation staff would need a little more, more time to review all this. Yeah. Digest mm -hmm. it. It just came in yesterday. I, I had a chance to download it. That was it. Okay. okay. And that fine we wanted we wanted to try to get as much information to you as quickly as we could um we obviously know there was an issue nobody's denying or running away and we will do whatever the commission needs us to do to, to number one make sure it doesn't happen again and number two um to remediate any issues that we have from this event okay all right, so we, we appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so one of the, I, I went out and visited the site um, you know, after we were notified of this event and just, um, you know, driving around some of the uh, work areas, you know, I noticed that there was a lot of the um, erosion control barriers that were, um, uh, you know that weren't that weren't functional. They were either knocked down or you know had soil pushed over them. Um, the sill fence, what you know, wasn't working as it um, you know as it should be. So I would just ask. I think that's a fairly simple um, you know short-term mitigation measure to make sure that you go out there and make sure that you know all the existing erosion controls are. Uh, functioning as they're supposed to be. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we can have our conservation staff take a look at the um, remediation. Uh, so there's an example right there that Don has a couple, a, a few examples. Um, so I, I think that's a short-term measure that can be implemented um, without having input from the conservation staff. You know, just do a, do a uh, survey around the construction site, make sure all existing erosion controls are constructed properly and are functional. Um, and then we'll take a look at the, uh, you know, mitigation plan, remediation plan that you guys submitted and we'll offer our comment on that. That makes sense. Absolutely. Okay. You know, we just, we, we, I mean, you know, it's, it's springtime, you know, early summer, we're still having these, you know, high precipitation events. We just had one this past weekend. So I think it's critical that these erosion controls be uh, functional to prevent this type of thing from happening going forward. Thank you. Through the chair? Yes, Don. Yep, they were able to um, take pictures of um, after the most recent rain event, and it looks like, you know, we didn't have erosion, uh, you know, sediment reaching the uh, uh, the, the old um, basins on the on the town's land, as as did previously happen. So, um, sort of shows um, the, the, the BMPs they've incorporated since the, since the violation um, have been an improvement. Okay, good. That's good to hear. Hello, hello, Don. Mike. Hello. Yes, I finally got into my to to with audio. Sorry about that. 
Um, I can update everybody if you'd like. I can give you an overview right now if you'd like, or if it's too late, just let me know. Um, I think I think we're all set, Mr. Rosati, at this point. Um, you're, I would uh, let you know that all the erosion controls are, are in place and they're all up to date. Um, that was done on day on day one, um, you know, and we've done a lot. They've done a lot of work over the last three or four weeks to improve the situation up there. Okay, good. That, that's uh, that's helpful, Mr. Uh, Engdahl gave us a kind of an overview of what you guys have been doing. So um, I don't think we need to go through it um, a second time, but we appreciate it. And. Uh, um, I don't know if you were listening to the conversation while you were on mute, but um, our conservation staff is going to look at the um, mitigation measures that are proposed and I uh, get back to you guys with comments. Yeah, the, you know, the long and the short of that is um, they're thinking we should allow the growing season to, to go because plants are already growing through the sediment that was the minor amounts of sediment that are there. We really felt that we'd do more damage to get in there, but we really thought that we should evaluate it at the end of the growing season to see how it come, how the wetland returned and if we needed to do something more dramatic, we could do that. Okay, that, that sounds good. Let us, uh, you know, as I said, let our staff review it and I uh, get back to you. Uh, to Very see, good. Just to see if that makes sense, okay? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't know what happened to my pencil. Okay, so let's move on to the um, let's move on to Maspinac Woods. Um, and I have to read this. This is a new filing. The Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 9, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Massapunk Woods LLC to raise a single family house and construct a new single family house with associated site work. The location is 5, Elm, 5 West Elm Street, Assessor's Map, R23, Block 4, Lot 0. Good evening, gentlemen. Do we have anyone from? Yep. Yeah, my, my name is Pete Tiberi. I'm counsel from Mashpinock. And uh, Bob Paxson is the engineer. So we'll let him uh, take you through everything. But uh, the gist of it is there's an existing house and septic system on the property that was approved, uh, approved as part of the, the, the special permit for the uh, development behind it. We also had a trail running through this property. Um, Maspinot took over that project, is now in the process of, of finishing that off, as you know. Um, and this plan is to raise the existing uh, dwelling uh, to use the existing septic system um, and to construct a new dwelling close to the road with uh, uh, moving everything outside of the jurisdictional areas as much as we can. So there's a reduction in uh, from existing in both the vernal pool as well as all the buffer areas. So we'll let Bob take you through that. Uh, we also have received two sets of comment letters from your consultant, which I believe we've, we've answered as well. So okay. Bob can take you through exactly the plans. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, I, I don't know why you can't see me, but um, you can't see me though, can you? I can see you. Oh, okay, good. All right. So, so, so this, what we're proposing to do is, um, this is part of the Maspinock Woods development. Um, this was the original home of Elena Wright, who was the original owner of the property. Uh, he abandoned this as part of the sale of the uh, property. And originally, uh, it was going to be when the original the original developers were going to just try to reconstruct and remodel it. It was only 800 square feet. Uh, it's on a it's on a concrete block foundation. Um, 
it has an existing septic system that we did a Title V inspection once she once she moved out. It, it passed at that point and hasn't had any use any use since then. So um, it, we we you know we looked at it structurally. It's structurally the building is not sound. The foundation isn't isn't supportive enough for uh, to add another story. So the applicant is proposing to just raise that structure, um, repair the that it was in with, with new vegetation and build another structure closer to the uh, street, which would um, finalize the development of this uh, this 31 unit Maspernock Woods uh, open space development. So it's the last, it's the last unit to be constructed. They've already constructed 30 units in 15 buildings. And within in, in that development, there's not one unit that it was within any kind of buffer of the wetlands. The only work that was performed in the buffer of the wetlands for the entire development was the construction of the detention basins. So we have this one last unit that requires us to intrude a little bit into the 50 foot wetland buffer and a little bit into the 25 foot buffer. Well, mo mostly the, within the 25 foot is to remove an existing shed that's there and, and restore that area where it is. Most of the work within the uh, 50 foot is just some grading and, um, and, and really the, the construction of the sway of the uh, train was already approved. Uh, and it's because there's an existing water line that was already constructed from uh, West Elm from, to the development. So that disturbance is, has been done in previously. And then we have uh, an issue with a vernal pool buffer that exists from a small vernal pool on the Butters, mostly on the Butters property. And I don't know if any of the members were part of this uh, presentation when we first came up with this, with this development, but the owner at the time of that property was trying to do whatever he could to stop it. And it was, that's, that's I call it the spike vernal pool. The only thing they ever found in that little area was, was caddisfly lava, one, one one instance of one caddisfly lava, and if they deemed it a vernal pool, I don't think anybody's looked at it since the original designation. I'm not even sure that it's still there, but uh, we're, we're, we're treating it as if it is, and we're trying to restore some area adjacent to the property line with some vegetation. We've, um, we've put planting a planting table for the um, restoration. And other than that, we're just looking to construct this house with the driveway and the grading, and then you know clean the lot up. I don't know if you've ever, if you've gone by it, but it's it's not a very attractive looking piece of property right now. And um, we would like to finish the development by finishing up with, with this one single family two bedroom house, basically the size of one of the half of the the duplexes that we were constructed in the development. Okay. The, the other aspect, if you go back to the original uh, development plan for Maspinock, yeah, on the very bottom of that, you, on the right-hand side, you see the house, and you see a little squiggly line on, to the lower end of that, um, down right there. That was a proposed trail. Uh, which is shown on the plans that everybody has approved, but it's it's pretty close to the wetland. There's no reason for that to make that jog as it is. So the other thing we're doing as part of that, as part of this plan, is moving that uh, anywhere between 15 and 20 feet away from the wetland line. You can see the little line right uh, to the to the left side of the house, so that we're straightening out that jog so we're farther away from the wetlands with that trail. What What's the, is that like a, uh, um, just like a cleared trail or is it a um, paved trail or no. stone no, dust? It's a trail that runs around the perimeter of the whole special permit development. So it connects it and brings it out, brings people out to West Main Street. So theoretically they could walk down to the, to the shopping center. Right, I, I get so that, but what's the construction of? Is it oh. paved stone dust or just- it's, uh, it's, not, it's not to be paved. It should just be some like, like a, 
uh, wood chips type scenario with the, just a walking trail. Okay. Just, just for yeah, passive. We don't want any any vehicles or, or any mountain bikes or it's just it's just for passive recreation. People can walk around the outside the development. I'll go down to the boathouse um, that's that's was that's been approved, and and actually get out to um, West West Elm Street. Okay. All right. Um, so you got. Uh, so let me let me first um, just bring Matt into the conversation. Matt, have you? You, you know, I'm reviewing or have your letter um, that you put together dated April 13th, revised May 12th. Um, have you had a chance to look at the supporting information that the applicant has provided? Yes, um, I think they've addressed uh, really all the comments that um, I had brought up the only one to me that maybe still stands out a little bit does get back to the, the trail when I was out there um, in April uh, looking at the site one area where the trail is proposed to go through um, but up in the back of the house there had what I would consider some fairly significant standing water I don't know if the wetland may have uh, sort of evolved um, yeah, right there. Um, so I believe that's where the trail is proposed to go through. And I guess just sort of from a functionality standpoint, whether that really needs some sort of a little bog bridge or something like that. Um, you know, most of the year it may be perfectly dry, but we didn't have an especially wet spring this year. Um, and that was the condition. So um, again, the well boundary is is already approved, but so I'm not necessarily raising the issue as, as more wetlands out there, just functionality of a trail through that. I, I, think, that, I think there's a possibility that, that there's maybe a, a slight depression there that was caused by the construction of the water line and maybe it just needs to be regraded. Yeah, that's that, where the water line went through. So yes, they might not have graded that property. Yeah. So we can do that as part of the final approval. Um, but that, is, that again, that'll be the trail through there. Is, that, is that in buffer zone, Matt, or is that outside our jurisdiction? No, it's in buffer zone. Yeah, that would be was a yeah, that would all be within buffer zone. Right. So um, yeah, I think we rather than regrading it and just filling it in. Um, you know, my sense is you put in some type of, uh, you know, wooden, um, you know, bridge structure, you know, just for people to walk over. It, it, well, I mean, it doesn't seem to be connected to anything. Uh, it, it, it just, just I mean, it's the first time I've seen the pictures of it, but it just looks like a, a puddle. I mean, it looks like a, a, an area of standing water which you might, you know, yeah, it might just if it's not it's not hydraulically connected to anything you might create a, a mosquito breeding and an issue of, of I don't know just uh, well I, I think it's I more think it than just a, a very short-term puddle just because it does have it did have wetland vegetation growing in it uh, it's right. kind of hard but to that, tell from the photo but there was soft rush and sedges and things coming out right because that because that that water line was one of the first things that was installed in this site that's that's probably been like that for you know, five six years. If and if they didn't grade it properly, then that's what's going to happen. But I mean, we'll do it. I mean, it's just it's just the only thing that we're going to do there is is construct the trail. So the trail is only only going to be you know it's not going to be as wide as what we, what that area is shown. So we can either try to skirt that area or or some some way of, of of bridging it with a with a wooden with a wooden bridge or something. But it's just, it just be part of the trail. Jeff, this is uh, Melissa. Can, can you 
Don, can you pull up the over, the site plan again? I just wanted to see what the potential was if you did move the trail over a little bit to avoid. Is it this area where the wetland kind of fingers out towards the trail? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, right where the cursor is. That, I believe that's where it is. Yeah, that's a water line, so the trail would be right over that. Yeah, so we, we have no, we, there's no reason why we can't, we can't put a little bend in the trail and get it to move it over in that area. That's not a problem. To go, we could go around that area and get, and, and so we're not disturbing it and just leave it to leave it alone. That's I, not think, a, I think that would probably be the least intrusive. Yeah, I, I agree, Melissa. I, I think that's fine. I mean, we're not talking about a paved or stone dust trail, you know, it's a basically just a wooded trail, so. Right. You know, I think you just need to kind of circumnavigate that area there. Um, okay. Uh, so, Matt, that was your only comment? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, they, they're proposing to, I don't know if they want to talk a little bit about the proposed uh, restoration work within the vernal pool buffer zone, just to present that to the commission. But um, I thought that was fine. All right. I guess, you know, my, my only thought is, you know, it's a two bedroom house, you know, the garage is really, you know, a significant, uh, you know, intrusion into the vernal pool buffer zone there, you know, can we make that a one car garage as opposed to a two garage, two car garage? Um, I think we're, I'm trying to think if you could do it as a as a two two in line. Uh, every every the the problem is, and this goes back to before, and it's certainly not your problem, but it's a problem with this lot in this. Uh, the original plan for Maspin Arc had a driveway coming through this area, and that was the entrance to the development, and right. that's the way yeah. it was filed. So this this lot was part of the overall development. Uh, through whether it was your process or the planning board process. Again, this was all before I was involved and before Bruce Wheeler, the current owner, was involved. The access, as you know, was shifted off the other side, and this just became the water line, the trail. Why this property, to be honest with you, was not taking out of the overall development, I don't know. Uh, but right now, and, it, and it's been uh, recorded as part of the master deed, that this property has to be part of the overall development, despite the fact that it really has no uh, use of the roadway system and everything else, um, but it's gotta be tied in. So every other unit within the development has the, the double garage and consistency and purposes of, of determining percentages and payments and fees and all that stuff, um, it, it just, again, not your financial issue, but. It, it makes it problematic to do anything less than what we're doing. The overall development within the vernal pool area from the viewpoint of the existing building is a reduction uh, from what's existing. And the same thing from the viewpoint of all the buffer zones. So this house, even with that garage in all the buffer zones in the vernal pool is, is less than what's existing. So we're hoping you'll accept that. Um, so so say that again, can you just clarify that? What do you mean it's less than? The, it, we had submitted as part of the original development that the existing house um, had, had a footprint within the 125 foot vernal pool of 513 feet. And with this plan, including the garage where it, where it um, what is it? Um, uh, 395 feet within the vernal pool. So we've got, you know, 100 plus out of 500 square foot reduction of, of structure within the vernal pool. Okay. Uh, never mind the 2,000 square foot overall reduction within the vernal pool area. So that was originally proposed um, when the notice of intent was filed, right? When the original, when the original notice of intent was filed, that's what was proposed. 
Yeah, yeah, that was the comparison between the existing house, 513 square feet within the 125 vernal pool. Yeah, okay, and there was no restoration that was originally proposed either. On the on the far side, we've added that. Yep, we've increased. So that's that. that's new. Okay, Don, can you just go back to the the site plan, please? Sure. So just bringing up, this is the original plan that they submitted with no buffer zone restoration. And now this is the revised plan. And I get, that's all for no pool restoration. Yeah, and here's the, okay. And here's uh, the buffer zone restoration um, information details right here. Okay. And I guess the last question I have is, so how old is the septic system that's there? And has it been inspected by the Board of Health? It has been inspected. I inspected it as a certified Title V septic inspector back in 19, when uh, this project first started. Um, and uh, it, has, it, it, it passed at that point, and it basically has not been used since. So it, it, it's just no reason to think that it's still not constructed. But the Board of Health is, um, has received uh, all the information regarding the septic system, and I do not believe there's any issue with the Board of Health. Okay. Okay. So let me at this point, I think all my questions are answered. Let me open it up to the other commission members, see if they have any questions or comments. This is, this is Janine through the chair. Um, I just have a comment on the two car garage. Right now it's placed flush with the back of the house. If you actually move it up and play, place it flush with the front of the house, you can get a good portion of it out of the 125. We can, you can see we can move it a little bit forward there, but that dash line is, is the, uh, the street setback line. Wow. So we could probably pull it up a little, you know, to that line, leave a little bit of drive. Is there, a, there may be a door there, Bruce, do you know? Yeah, because it looks like flush to the front of the house is still behind the setback line a little bit. Right. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Janine. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. You can pull that garage up. Yep. Yep. You know, that pulls it out of the vernal pool, um, buffer zone. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other comments from the commission members? This is Jim. I have a question. So, um, I understand that the, uh, that the septic system is passed now. But has there been any consideration for a reserve area? I don't see one on the plan when I was looking at it. Is there a reserve area? For the, the, the reserve area is part of the original design. It, just, it was designed with a reserve area. So there is a reserve area in between. It's designed with a reserve between the existing trenches. Okay. So, so, so there was an issue with what, with what happens. We, we could construct uh, the, additional, the additional area within the... Um, within the existing area. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Last question, the shed, I don't remember exactly what happened with the shed, but is the shed raised now? It's not been replaced, right? No, it's just gonna be taken down. It hasn't okay. been yet, yet yet, but it will be. Okay, thank you. Now this is Ed, and my concerns relate to the septic system in the buffer zone and essentially the entirety of the house and garage in the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, and as a general sort of thing, I, I, I understand that we sometimes, you know, accept this, but we do it with the idea that we're going to get something back. And so I don't think the proposed vernal pool buffer restoration area does it for me. <laughs> well, yeah, but you, you, can't, you can't look at it as a standalone lot. It's part of a, a, the whole development. And you, you people are getting a trail system. You've got open space that we, put, we provided for within the entire development. And not one other unit in this development was built within the buffer, the 100-foot buffer or any buffer. So, so – you know, you, no, we, you, you yeah, can't I think, I think we understand that, Mr. Fox, and I, um, you know, I appreciate that. And um, it's previously disturbed the area as well, so that's another point. Um, 
but uh, yeah, your point's taken. You know, the, the, this considerable open space that was set aside, the trail system, minimal incursion in the buffer zone with the development. So um, yeah, your point is taken. Thank you. Okay. Um, so if there's no other comments from the commission, let me open it up to public comment. Does anyone who has a comment, please uh, raise your hand so I can see it. Um, let me just scroll through. Doesn't look like we have any comments. Uh, so I'll give it another 10 seconds here if there's public comment. To the chair? Yep. Yes. Just want, to, just want to make a FYI point. Um, the plan does show a 25 foot wetland buffer, but you know, it, it's just for informational purposes. This isn't a grandfathered lot. So, you know, it still has the 50 foot limit of work, limit of structure, but it's a previously disturbed area. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Don. Uh, okay. This is Janine. I actually, I have another question. So the existing house and in, in, um, base is going to be removed in the shed. What will happen to that space? Will it just go back to grass or will, or will it be natural buffer zone? Um, more than likely it'll go to grass. I mean, we have the, um, the you know, the septic system is sitting back there. Uh, um, I mean, a good portion of it would be grass. We'd want to have somewhat of a backyard. I mean, we could, I, I mean, it's probably if you it can John, can you put the uh, can you put that photo of that existing house up for us? So you can see there isn't really uh, oh I don't know if you can you can't really tell but there isn't a lot of area behind it that's yeah I mean you can see what it looks like now. Um, it's probably what's behind the house itself will just stay the way it is and up until the up to the house would would be up to the limits of the you know the the removed structure would be would be grassed they and stuff behind whatever what's ever behind the structure would just stay as it is you can see it's disturbed right up to it up to it now so um, we would just remove the structure and, and refill that in, fill in the uh, whatever the, the foundation hole is, and, and uh, probably loam and seed that. But everything from the from the structure back would stay as it is. Okay. All right. And do we have PI, um, PIBs identified on any of these plans? We can make that a standard, you know, it's usually a standard condition at the limit of work at the erosion control barrier. Yeah. So you'd want to protect the, this area and, you know, the area behind. Yeah, I just don't see them identified, but we, we'll put that as a standard condition. Um, and, uh, you know, they, the applicants submit the proposal to, to Don and Matt. Um, in terms of where the, um, so what, what, what are you proposing as the, uh, the um, PIB, Mr. Paxson? Well, it would, well, we would probably, uh, along the erosion control, which is the limited disturbance, so the limit of our proposed development area, which we see, and, and I mean, I wouldn't want it to go, um, I so are you want, are you amenable want, but are you but, amenable to putting like a split rail fence in there with yeah that'd be with, fine. with sure. the cons, with you know with the medallions that say yeah right yep yep that's fine okay. yeah we can do that without a problem okay all right so we'll put that as a condition um, the trail is another special condition just having that yep meander outside the uh, the area where we have the standing water um, okay. Through the, right. chair, through the chair, yep. 
Do we put anything in the standard conditions about the kinds of fertilizer and restrictions on the use of fertilizers on properties adjacent to places like this? We do. We do. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a standard uh, condition, Ed. Thank you. All right, I think we're ready for a Karen? vote. Oh, sorry. Is it Tara? It's Karen. Yes, yep, Carrie. So what, because we've been having some issues where they have a plan on septic or something like this, and then they had to move them. So what's our condition for that? I'm like, I'm concerned if the Board of Health comes back and, and doesn't approve it. Do we have like a special condition where they have to come back if they're moving it or how do yeah. we break that in? That would be a project change. So yeah, any project, project change, change would have okay. to be run by the commission. Okay, got it. Okay, any other comments? All right, if I can, um, Get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent as discussed with the special conditions. Um, subject to a revised plan for the garage. Subject to the revised plan with the PIB identification and the garage. Yep. Within two weeks. Is, is that okay with you folks, uh, Mr. Sure. Jackson? Mr. I'll, I'll have it before the end of the week. Okay. <laughs> All right, is there a motion? This is Melissa. I'll make a motion. And a second, please. Jim will second. Jim will second, and we'll go through the roll call vote. Melissa? Aye. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? No. Janine? Aye. Uh, Ted is not present, so, and this is Jeff, and I'm an aye. Thank so you. The motion you. passes. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good evening. Jeff, this is um, Melissa. I'm going to have to jump off the call. Okay. Now um, I'll come back if I, if I can, if it's still going on, but I just don't know what time. Okay. Okay. Thanks for letting us know, Melissa. Yep. All right, so our next hearing is Nation, Six Leon's Way. This is a notice of intent for a single family home. And I think I saw Nation's on the call. Let me just read this one. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent, followed by 20th Century Homes for site work associated with the construction of a single family house. The location is 6 Leon's Way, Assessor's Map R12, Block 5, Lot 3. Good evening. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, barely. All right, I'll speak up. <laughs> so who, who are we speaking this with? Is, this is Mary Ann DePinto. I didn't have any place to type my name in. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Is DePinto. So are you the representative of uh, 20th Century Homes? Y yes, and uh, I don't know if Ron Nation's online as well or on the phone. I think he is. I, okay. I saw him join the call. Yep. Okay, yeah, why don't you give us an overview, please? Uh, well, I did the wetlands delineation and uh, Lucas Environmental reviewed it. Um, they had questions with flags that were way off site and turned out that I did not need to uh, uh, go back and revisit those. But it agreed with the, uh, the flagging that was done within, that created the buffer zone on the site. Uh, there is a, a field area, the stormwater detention for the roadway that it services the houses there. This is one of the uh, last lots on the uh, cul-de-sac. And the uh, stormwater is just off the site and in, in, uh, drains into that wetland that you see at the toe of the steep slope. Okay. 
you got it. And what you see is the the hundred foot buffer zone from that. The house is outside of it. The septic system as well. So it's grading. So the grading from the well is inside the hundred foot buffer zone. Yeah, it's the grading for the house. Okay. The lessen the slope. And the uh, the septic's outside the hundred foot. Okay. Erosion controls during the well drilling. All right, so Matt, um, do you want to just, uh, looks like they've addressed, um, or why don't, you, uh, why don't you weigh in on this and let us know if uh, your comments have been addressed. It appears sure. that they have been, but. Yeah, so as, uh, as Marianne said, uh, I had a couple minor questions about the uh, wetland boundary, but it was really far enough away from the project where it wasn't worth um, mm -hmm. discussing further. So the wetland boundary is all set. Um, during the inspection, it was noted that uh, a portion of the wetland appears to be routinely mowed. Um, so a recommendation would be as, as this lot is developed that that situation be discontinued. Um, there was a fairly significant area of dumping of woody debris, stumps and brush um, in the rear of the property that the commission may want to discuss potentially having um, pulled out as part of the project. Um, there's also an area where it looks like uh, ATVs or something are accessing the rear of the property. Um, and they had dump some sand back there that was sort of creeping into the wetland. So there's a couple areas where there's uh, some minor existing disturbance that, um, you know, just might want to be discussed so that presumably a new owner wouldn't continue that, but um, might be worth a special condition or something just to, to clarify that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And I'm sure it's the neighbors, you know, it's an empty lot. So the neighbors are probably dumping debris back there. Once the new house is there, you know, I imagine that would stop. Uh, but uh, Mr. Pinto, on behalf of the applicant, is that, is that those conditions amenable? Yes. Yeah, I observed the same thing. It, and we will try to find someone that could pull that back. But whoever owns the lot can pull the Woody debris back and that a comment be made or a condition be made to prevent future uh, impacts to wetlands. Okay, and removal of the debris of the debris yes. that's that's uh, acceptable. Yes. Okay. And then the only the only other comment I had, Jeff, that I'm not sure if it's been addressed or not, was I had a comment about. Um, it appears as though they're proposing a subsurface infiltration system. I wasn't yeah. sure if the plan was updated to actually show the location of the system and have sizing calculations. Okay. So that has not been provided, but I think we can. Um, that was showing on the, yeah. Has that been updated, Mrs. DePinto? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Okay, um, well, wh why don't we do this? Um, if you can you know, talk to Mr. Nation, um, you know, have that added, you know, have the calculations done, added to the plan um, so we know where it is and that the sizing is acceptable. You know, we can approve it pending review by, um, you know, Matt and, and sure. Yeah, that works. Okay. All right, excellent. All right, um, questions or comments from the commission? My only comment is what a well done drawing that's very clear and easy to follow. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I didn't have any responsibility for it though. <laughs> okay. Sorry. All right. Do we have questions or comments from the audience? Let me just see if there's any hands raised oh. here. Oh. There's a detail sheet attached, I believe. Oh, yeah. Does it show any specs on the infiltrator?
I'm having a hard time seeing, but. Septic tank, connector, clean out, D e box. Right. Oh, yeah, there's a roof, infil roof infiltration dry well. Um, but no specs. But no specs. All right. Okay. So just we, we, we just need some, you know, calculation specs to ensure that the sizing is correct. Okay. And if we can get, you know, if we can get that presumably within the next couple of weeks, that, that's acceptable. Okay, it doesn't look like there's any comments from the audience. Um, let me just check one more time. I don't see any hands raised. Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent uh, with the special conditions as discussed. So moved, this is Ed. And a second, please. Can you Carrie, I'll second. Okay, we have a second. We'll do the roll call vote. Um, Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. And this is Jeff, and I'm an aye. So the motion passes. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Okay. Moving on. We have Keeley, 60 Pine Island Road, notice of intent to raise an existing family home and build a new single family home. Hello. Hi, Hello. Mr. Keeley, and this is a continuation, so I don't need to read this one. No, it's new. Oh, yeah, you have to read it. Yeah, it's new, Jeff. Oh, it is? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Anna. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. virtually online to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent, followed by Robert Keeley to raise a single family house and construct a new single family house with associated site work. The location is 60 Pine Island Road, assessor's map R33, block 23, lot zero. Okay, good evening, Mr. Keeley. Good evening. You wanna give us an overview of the project, uh, sure. that would be helpful? Sure. So I would either way, Bob. Uh, if you want to do it, Bill, uh, Bill, Bill Halsing's our uh, civil engineer. Um, so, Bill, oh, good evening, Mr. Halsing. Yeah, good evening. Um, here for Bob Keeley tonight. The lot is 60 Pine Island Road. It's um, just north of the Milford Town Line, if you come up Pine Island Road off of Camp Street in Milford. Uh, the subject property is an existing house lot, existing house about 41 feet from uh, Lake Maspinar with a garage. The dwelling has an on-site cesspool and uh, well, both non-conforming to uh, current Title V. The plan is to redevelop the property. The work's gonna consist of raising the existing structures and constructing the new dwelling, a conforming septic system, and conforming well, the driveway and other improvements. Most of it outside of the buffer zone. A number of deceased and uh, diseased trees are proposed to be removed before the construction begins. Bob plans on putting a dock and boat lift to replace the existing dock out there in Lake Maspinar. The dock is gonna sit on uh, footpaths and not have uh, footings within the lake. Pretty much all of the lot where the construction is proposed was previously disturbed by the you know, construction of the existing house quite a few years ago now, I'd say over 50 anyway. Um, new house closest to Lake Maspinock is proposed to be about 45 feet. Um, proposed on-site septic system has been submitted to the Board of Health and approved. Um, and part of the scheme of the layout on this lot was to keep construction 
as tight as we can against Pine Island Road. The uh, proposed well is as tight as it can go up into the lot corner, followed by the septic system, which is now not a cesspool within the buffer zone, but fully outside of the uh, buffer zone. And the house as tight as we can get it against the septic system. Um, there's some additional impervious area proposed, but the entire roof runoff will be infiltrated into underground infiltrators. We did have a few comments from Lucas Environmental after we submitted, which we have addressed and it was submitted probably a month and a half ago. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Halsing. So Matt, um, I, I saw that you had a few comments. Have those been addressed to your satisfaction? Yeah, I, I think they've addressed all my comments. I think the only one uh, that left remaining, I'm going to double check this, was Don. Was Don was a question about the um, pervious pavers. Don, is that right? We had a question about that? Yeah, the uh, uh, the base. Did we think it was going to um, provide enough yeah. um, infiltration? That's right. Yeah, they did provide a, a specification for the pervious pavers, but um, in my view, it didn't look like something that might, it was either either not going to infiltrate or it was likely to freeze and heave the way it appeared to be shown on the spec. Well, perhaps underneath we could propose some, uh, some gravel as opposed to uh, just backfill. Yeah, typically you'd have a, you know, a good foot of uh, gravel or pea stone or something under that to, yep. to receive the water. Yeah, so we can change compacted subgrade to uh, gravel. Okay, yeah, I think that makes sense. And that, um, you know, that's beneficial to the homeowner too, because you don't have the driveway yep. issues going forward with the heaving, right? So, um, you know, if you can make that change on the plan um, and submit it to us, um, you know, as a condition of the approval, you know, within two weeks or a week, you know, that would be great. Um, so that was the only outstanding issue, Matt? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'm, I'm good. I don't have any questions. Let me open it up to the other commission members. Any comments or questions? This is Ed, just wondering if it could be moved towards the street any further? With the Behind house that? or? Yeah. Well, right now we have the well as tight as it can go against the front lot line, the septic as tight as it can go against the well, and the house as tight as it can go against the septic system. And, and the well has to be on the street side of the house? Well, in order to make everything lay out and work, that seems to be the best layout. And, you know, per, you know, town regs, we have to be, you know, 20 feet off the street line, 10 feet off the lot line, 20 feet off of the driveway. And so why would it be a problem to have the well on the back side of the house? Well, that discussion was kicked around, you know, with the architect and the client. And the challenge could be, and the Board of Health didn't want it down there anyway, uh -huh. but how do you service the well? That was the big question that came up. Okay. So the way it's laid out, it's easy to service the well and the septic system. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other comments from the commission? Um, yep. Yeah, Janine, Janine. Through, the, through the chair. Um, so I, I can understand why the house can't be moved up, but could it be made smaller so that it's not in the 50s? Well, that is the design from the architect. Perhaps Bob could better address that. To meet, to meet the program elements we wanted to put in the house, this was, um, this was the design that we, we've, been, we've been working on. And it, it incorporates it, the, the three bedroom house are replacing what's there. In its previously disturbed area, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, yeah. 
So it looks like the footprint of the actual dwelling doesn't get any closer to the lake. Um, there's a screen porch that's proposed. I can't read the patio, I guess, um, there. It looks like the structure actually gets pulled back a little bit. It does. Correct. Okay. Screen porch, okay. What's underneath the screen porch? Is that foundation or? The, the, yeah, the foundation wall run around it. And, okay. Um, so there's not, there's not an area underneath that that's part of the actual? Correct. Structure. Correct. Okay. Okay. All right, are there any other questions from the commission? Questions from the audience? Just scroll through, see if there's any, doesn't look like there's any questions from the audience. Okay, so I think we're ready for a vote on this. If I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent with the special conditions as uh, discussed. So moved, Jim. And we have a motion from Jim and a second, please. Janine, I'll second. And Janine is a second. We'll do the roll call vote. So, Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. And Jeff, and I'm an aye. So the motion passes. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you very much. Very good, Mr. Keeley. Good luck. Thank you. We're excited to get started. Okay. Hopefully you'll be in the fall. That's <laughs> at least for next summer. <laughs> okay, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Good night. Have a good evening. Okay. Moving along. The Wolf 28 Lumber Street. This is an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. Mark or not, you uh Jeff, it's one you're gonna read. Yep. Thank you, Don. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, June 9th, 2020 at 6.30, virtually online. To hear all persons interested in an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation filed by New View Inc. to determine the limit and regulatory status of an on site wetland resource. The location is 28 Lumber Street, Assessor's Map R23, Block 67, Lot 0. We have uh, a representative from the Wolf. Uh, that is myself, Nicole Hayes from Goddard Consulting. How are you doing, Mrs. Hayes? How are you? Good. Doing good, thanks. So we delineate the wetlands on site. There is an isolated wetland that also is an isolated land subject to flooding and a bordering vegetated wetland. Um, um, Lucas Environmental went out and peer reviewed the flags. They had a couple of changes that they requested. Um, then I went back out and looked at their changes that they requested. We agreed with some of them. Um, the ones that we didn't agree with were mostly due to um, a non predominance of wetland vegetation. It was more upland vegetation, upgrading of the line. Um, we submitted a second report. I'm not sure if Lucas Environmental has a chance, had had a chance to review that report or not. Um, so that's where we are 
at the present time. Okay, Matt, did you have a chance to review the second report? Uh, yeah, so I went back out to the site this afternoon. Um, so this just to back up for a second, because this is a little bit um, different than how we normally do this type of review on an ANRAD, but because of the whole COVID thing, um, and this was so fairly early on in the COVID thing that uh, it had been flagged. I thought it was best just to me to go out on my own and so hang, some, hang some flags. Nicole went out and looked, as she said, um, either agreed or disagreed, provided the report, and then I went back out. Normally, we would kind of just sort it all out in one site visit, but um, and maybe now, because I think there still are some outstanding items, we can do that. But that was why this got strung out a little bit differently than normal. Um, so when I went back out today, um, I'll just go through. I, I had a brief memo that I had sent over to Dawn. Um, so flag B2, um, Nicole didn't agree with where I had changed that. Um, I went back out and looked at it again and, and the, the data form that the Don um, had up on the screen there demonstrate the vegetation based on the plot that I did. Um, I feel it does meet the, the uh, predominance of wetland vegetation through there. Um, so that's the basis of that one. Uh, for B3R, um, I did modify my flag a little bit, but I still think it, the original flag needs um, some minor modification. Uh, B4, B5, and B6, um, after looking at that area, those areas, I'm okay with the original delineation. Uh, same thing with flag GC6, which is on sort of the back side of the BVW. And then uh, flags GC10, 11, and 12, um, Nicole had submitted uh, in, in the memo some vegetation data that I kind of plugged into the data form um, and that actually came out as being equal wetland and upland so it does meet the BVW criteria uh, yeah. unless I'm misinterpreting the information that was submitted uh, and I prepared a, a little form for that so um, Nicole can look at that and I guess comment on that as, as needed. Uh, and then the only other comment I had was um, in the memo, it had, I had asked about the uh, vernal pool. There's two areas out there. One is identified on the mass GIS as a potential vernal pool. I think there's two areas out there that have potential. Uh, it sounded like Goddard had investigated those areas this year and I um, I would just like to see a little bit more information on when those investigations were done and uh, more information basically about that as to whether those areas should still consider be, to be ver potential vernal pools or not. Um, so I think um, unless Nicole wants to agree with sort of my latest thing, which she really hasn't seen, um, we probably need to continue this out for a little bit more discussion. Yeah, do you think it would be best if we could meet on site? Is that a, acceptable to you? Yeah, I think we can do that and just, you know, keep our social distancing and all that good stuff. Yep, that sounds fine with me. Okay. All right. Um, so I think that makes sense. Um, seems like we have a little bit more homework to do on this one. Um, so our next meeting is scheduled for the 23rd. So Nicole, can we, uh, I guess I'll put this question to Nicole and to Matt. You know, do you think you'll be able to get out on site before the 23rd and come to a meeting of the minds? I, I can definitely do that. Yeah, I think that can be done. Okay. So Nicole, will continue it out to the 23rd. Yes, please. And then if you can just send Don an email to that effect, um, requesting the extension to the 23rd. I will. Thank you. And through the chair? Yep. Just one other uh, item. Uh, so the rear of this lot backs up to the existing uh, nursery um, operations. And there's been some minor, what I would consider minor sort of impingement into the wetlands back there and I don't know if that's something that 
you want to have any discussion of at this time or it's, it's mainly they appear to be kind of healing in um, plantings in the wetland with some mulch um, you can kind of see in the, in the I think that's the best picture there that kind of shows uh, where they're essentially using some of the BVW to store some of their plants. Just as temporary the, 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 the planting them there um, until this this sold essentially or yeah I believe so but it appears to be sort of an ongoing operational use um, so if you look on the plan there it's sort of in that le for le 3R area, I believe. Um, Through the chair. Okay. Yeah, Don, go ahead. Um, there's historic um, filings with the commission for the, for the land down here, but there is no historic um, applications on file with the commission for any disturbance on this particular lot. So, you know, sort of like, a, you know, you've got like a little lawn creep, you, you have a little business creep onto yeah, this what, parcel that you have, you have never, the pictures of never it? got reviewed in the past. Yeah, do you, have, do you have pictures of it, Don? Yes. Matt, pick these up. It's near this flag when he was doing his site inspection. So are they digging into the ground or is it just like they're putting them there and putting, you know, loam and mulch around them? Yeah, they're getting plant material and just using it as a, you know, an area to keep it in the ground before they so sell it. So they're not digging? It's hard to say. They may be digging a little bit, but I think it's more of just putting down the, the root ball or the, or the pot and then putting some soil or some mulch or something sort of over it just to keep it um, more, sort of more long-term storage, I guess. So whatever ve natural vegetation was there has now been stripped away and now it's a, a you know, a temporary plant area. Yeah. Okay. If, Nicole, if you can just talk to your client about that. Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Questions or comments from the commission members? And Nicole, I mean, they can, you know, if they, um, well, I'll talk to them and, and I guess see what they say. Okay. All right. Let me just see if there's any questions or comments from the audience. Doesn't look like it. Okay. All right. So we'll continue out to the 23rd. Thank you, Nicole. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right. Let me know when you're ready to move on, Don. Okay. Um, looks like we're going shifting to uh, work session. Yeah, H. Long Corporation. Right. We did get a request for an extension permit. It it wasn't within the 30 days. You know, that was the only issue. And uh, I asked for a status update. I never heard back from them. But as far as I know, no site work has... Um, has started yet on the site. This is just a single family home, right? Yeah, it was that one um, that had the existing house that hasn't yeah. been um, um, looking for their extension permit request. The one around that S curve where they want to build in the back, right? Correct. Yeah. So here's the request. With all the trees flagged. Let me get you uh, um, probably the most recent plans in this project change. Actually, no. That, those are the tree. Let me uh, let me just mm -hmm. go one back. Get your site plan. Uh, yeah. So you've got an existing house here, wetland crossing to a house up here. 
And uh, this is the one where they, they, were, they wanted, they had a project change to take a lot of trees out in this area. Uh, yeah. yeah. So as far as I know, they have not started the site activity. Okay, so they're requesting a three year extension. Right. Uh, presumably. All right, uh, I don't have a. Right here. Yeah. Um, Yeah, they didn't spell out how many years they want. I would imagine it's three. Yeah, I would assume. Yeah. Oh yeah, they put in a type. Yeah, they sort of typed in what they were looking for here. It's uh, out to 2003, 23, correct. Three okay. year extension. All right, can I get a motion to extend the order of conditions to 109 Winter Street? So moved, Jim. And a second, please. Any Any second. Please. Go everyone. <laughs> All right, and we'll do, the, we'll do the roll call. Carrie? Aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Ed? Aye. <laughs> Janine? Aye. And this is Jeff, and I'm an aye. All right. There's no aye in Jeff. <laughs> There is one in Jim, though. <laughs> okay. Halt and Sudbury Valley Trustees, Zero Greenwood Road, an exemption request. Is there anyone um, in the waiting room, Jeff, that might want to talk about this, or I is think it just Maury? I saw Maury come in earlier. I don't know if he's still on. Uh, let me see. I'm here too. Yeah, Steve Lewandowski. Uh, I'll let Steve talk about this. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so what we're proposing is a uh, connector trail between um, two existing trails that would uh, run through two parcels of land, um, one uh, HALT, one SVT. Um, there's a little bit of, um, uh, there's an intermittent stream um, that, that this would cross, um, but you can step over it using boulders. So we're not proposing any uh, bridges. And that's the photo of the, uh, intermittent stream area. Okay. So it's just minimal clearing associated with the um, putting the trail in? That's right. Are there any vernal pools on the property that you know um, of? Not that I, not that I know of, uh, at least not near the, where the trail is. Not according to the GIS. Okay. Um, just wondering if there's the, uh, you know, possibility of putting any kind of educational signs in along the trail you know, related to identification of trees or wildlife, things like that. Steve, do you guys have any budget for that? Um, Maury might be able to <laughs> talk about Yeah, that. We, we, uh, we, might, we might have a little bit of budget for that. Uh, to make the signs vandal proof is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been working on the signs. They're not cheap. They're like, you know, twelve hundred bucks each. So yeah, so, so uh, that's some, something to think about for the future, I guess. Because yeah, we would love to have them. We have plenty of ideas, but it's expensive. Yeah, I think you know those types of things like encourage you know people to go out um, to get out on the trail and learn about the uh, outdoors. You know, especially the kids. You know, I think they enjoy it. But anyways, okay. So I think I'm good with this. Do we have any questions or comments from the commission? All right, if I get a motion to approve the exemption request. So moved. This is Ed. And a second. Jim, will second. Jim, Jim will second. Jim second. We'll do the roll call. Um, Carrie? 
Aye. Jim. Aye. Um, aye. Dean. Aye. Jeff is an aye. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Steve. Sure. Maybe one more. Okay, so the next one is Halt Zero Greenwood, and this is also an exemption request. Well, Steve, you're on this one too. Yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk about this one too. So oh, okay, uh, it just says Halt. It doesn't say SVT. So. Right. Are you with Are you with Sudbury Valley? Or are you with Halt? I, I'm with Halt. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, so, um, so, so this proposal is to put. Um, uh, boardwalks across uh, some streams and uh, muddy areas um, on an existing trail. And I've, I've, I included some photos of the, uh, the areas where the, where they would go. So that first one um, is about a 20 foot span that would be in two, two pieces. It's the same construction that's been previously proposed, just two right. kind of linear planks or logs with the, there we go, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the construction would be, um, yeah, stringers with- um, Stringers, that's what I meant. Put wide uh, treads across. Okay. That so would be a pedestrian footbridge. Through the chair. Can you put the, uh, yes, sorry, Don, go ahead. Yeah, uh, and the pet, we've had different size um, footbridges. This is a little narrower. This is a, a two foot wide. We've yep. even seen them, you know, up to uh, four feet wide. Yeah, so Steve, one question I have is can you put like the ramp on either side so the mountain bikes can go over it instead of going through the stream? We, we could design it th that way. Because otherwise, you know, if you have mountain bikers using the trail, if you don't have the ramp to go over the bridge, then they'll just go through the stream. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We, we can make it, we can make it mountain bikeable. That'd be, that'd be good. Cause I, I do a lot of mountain biking and um, if there's a bridge like that, that doesn't have the ramp, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm getting too old <laughs> to, to risk. You know, trying to get up on the bridge and injure myself, so I just go through the stream. I can't. I can't get get over anything out of, uh, that's higher than about a two inch. <laughs> yeah, it's same thing with oh. me. So we have sometimes have mountain bikers use up uh, put logs and sticks at the end of the bridge so they get up easy. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you could make that kind of you know modification to the design, mm -hmm. that'd be helpful. Yeah, we can make that happen. Okay, questions or comments from the commission? If I can get a motion to approve the exemption request. So moved, Mr. Jim. And a second. This is a second. And we'll do the roll call. Carrie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. And Jeff's and I. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, folks. Yeah. Gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, Dealiva 43 Blueberry Lane. This is an exemption request. Mr. Dealiva got on when the meeting started, I guess he, uh, oh, there he is. Yeah. Hey, Mark, hey, how Jeff. you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Jeff? Yeah, it's been a long meeting, so I <laughs> uh, had to sit there through the whole thing. It's been interesting. It's been interesting. <laughs> uh, how's the kids doing, all right? Doing well. Doing well. Good. Excellent. How about yours? Good, good, thanks. Hope you guys are staying safe. <laughs> we all are. Right. We are. So we, we have an exemption request. You just want to... Uh, Talk to us about just doing a deck extension. Right. Um, you know, the, the house is about 26 years old. The deck is, at least the deck structure is at least that old. Um, and it's, you know, it's starting to get a little long in the tooth. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, as we've considered uh, doing some improvements or 
um, replacements. Um, we thought by extending it another four feet, it would, you know, we'd get a little bit more functionality out of it. Yeah, that's no problem. It's previously uh, disturbed the areas grass. Yeah. So I don't see that as an issue. Um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, questions or comments from the commission? Uh, if I get a motion to uh, approve the exemption request as requested by Mr. D'Oliva. So moved, Mr. Jim. So I'll Jim, second. Jim will second. So Ed made the motion. Jim is seconding, and we'll do the roll call. Carrie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. And Jefferson. Aye. All right, you're good to go, Mark. Great. Thanks for Thank hanging in there. Appreciate right. the consideration. Yep, take care. Take care. Okay. Um, so we have a complaint of an installed footbridge and trail erosion on zero pressed wick. It's actually a nice bridge. <laughs> yeah. There's a complaint for that? Uh, yeah. Huh. So it's uh, on the town's, um, the town's open space. It's managed by the uh, Parks and Rec. Uh, we have no idea who went out and, and built this. Um, it's sort of, in, it's, it looks like it incorporates two design elements. You, the, uh, DCR typically has these railings along here, and Halt had um, this 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 plan right here, as we talked about at just their, at their last one. Um, I was trying to bring it up. Halt ten, has in the past used four foot wide um, foot bridges that have the um, the ramps that you were talking about here, Jeff. Yeah. So it, it looks like it looks like a combination between. Halt and um, DCI's footbridge guidelines. So they typically would have a five foot wide boardwalk and then they would have uh, the, uh, the rails. So, um, but obviously I, I think people were concerned, you know, the timing of it, this wasn't probably the best time to install um, uh, the footbridge. So getting access to it with whatever, I, I don't know what they used for, for machines to get the uh, supplies out there, but obviously, you know, if they came to the commission, would have said, I think the commission probably would have approved um, a footbridge of this type. And uh, yeah, there was some complaints about the, um, the masonry that was used to support it. Um, but, um, Seems like it's something that the commission has approved in the past um, for for stream crossings with, and it, it was already an existing trail. So right. Uh, so is it? It's on Hopkinton Town property. Correct. You know. So it's like, uh, all right. You know. Then would it would it mean now that we'd have to ask for like the town to submit an after the fact request for a bridge that constructed on their land that they don't know about you know Parks and Rec didn't you know um, direct this you know it it was it was unknown to them do we know, know who did it no no I mean uh we had it reported that people that were walking the trail saw it as it was getting constructed but I don't know if it was in the middle of the night middle of the day whatever but um no we have we don't have no one's given us any proof of who did it. <laughs> mm, I mean. Yeah, so, I, I, you know, I don't think there's much we can do unless the commission 
either is I, okay know, with it I, or if they want it removed, then you'd have to hit the town up for saying we want it removed, you know? It's either, I, I, I like it. It's a nice bridge. <laughs> Um, I would just say let's reach out to Halt and ask them if they know of anyone who constructed it. Well, um, I don't think it's Halt would know because it's not on Halt land. Oh wait, so, hold on a second. Someone has the hand raised. Um, who is it? Um, okay, five zero eight two zero eight nine two nine nine. Hi, Jeff. Peter Lagori. Hey, Peter, how you doing? Rose Street. Good, how you doing? Good, thanks. Um, so I'm one of the complainers, and the issue is that whoever put the bridge in didn't approach anybody. It just sort of, the bridge just sort of appeared. It is a very nice bridge, you're right. It's, it's probably a little big for that area. It looks kind of out of place, but it's a nice bridge. Um, the trail going there is on private land, and that got pretty well ripped up as they were bringing stuff in. It's a piece of, they use obviously a tractor to get materials down there. Um, Do we have any so idea we don't know who, who did it? Uh, the rumor is, so secondhand, is that Jane, Jane Rand was the one who put it in, but I have no idea. But one of the people who walked back there said that he talked to a guy who was working on it who said that Jane told him to put it in. So that's what, fourth hand? Um, so, so, so take that so, for what it's worth. So the Upper Charles Trail Committee or as a private resident? Don't know. This is Jim. Um, we have an Upper Charles Trail Committee, of which I'm uh, liaison hasn't met since we were right. down, but I don't recall anybody voting on putting a bridge in. <laughs> All right. Right. Um, so the issue, Jeff, is that Steve Lewandowski has been kind of waiting patiently for us to give him permission to go build stuff. And, um, you know, we really, we really can't give him permission because we can't meet yet. Here somebody just comes and goes and puts this in. And while it's nice, um, they really shouldn't be doing that on town property. No, I, I agree. Um, I, I agree, Peter. And there's a process you have to go through. So let me let me do a little bit of investigative uh, research and uh, on my end and see if I can figure it out. And uh, um, you know, we'll just have to uh, address it at another meeting. <laughs> So I'll reach, out to a few, I'll reach out to a few folks. Um, Through the chair? Yeah. I could make an observation. There's a lot of trails there, and then we have a bridge that appears to be the bridge to nowhere. It doesn't connect to a trail. There's no trail at the end of the bridge, at least no trail shown. Yeah, there's a trail there. Yeah. There so the black line is not the trail. The black line is merely pointing to the location. It goes off to the left on the other side. <laughs> I mean, someone someone had the, well, someone obviously owns a black and white dog. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the first uh, investigative. Uh, <laughs> Steve Lovendowski's dog. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so someone had to pay for this. You know, it doesn't look like it's a cheap bridge. No. Uh, so I'll, I'll do some research, Peter, and uh, Great. and uh, we'll we'll try to figure it out. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. See ya. Okay. You bye. too. Bye. All right. Okay, Don. Um, so I think the last item is the 6 p.m. start for the 23rd to uh, July 14th. Oh, July 14th. Sorry. Right. It was July 14th for the Mass DOT dog and pony show for the. Yes, the I 95, I 95 interchange. Interchange. Um, they'd like to, uh, Mass DOT has reached out to Hopkinton and Westboro, is hoping to do a uh, initial joint meeting, 
and it would be uh, hosted by by Hockington. And then when it's over, uh, Westboro would leave our meeting, and then they need time to restart their own meeting. So they were hoping <coughs> we could bump up to six o'clock instead of six thirty to to facilitate that. Do we expect we're still going to be doing these Zoom calls on July fourteenth? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who we it'll, it'll, be a, it'll be a Zoom call because we're going to have the Southboro South, uh, Conservation Commission join us too. Yeah. Okay. Good point. So yeah. So Hoffman would host. Um, we would have them on first. Um, then Westboro would leave, and we continue on with our agenda after that. Is that okay with everyone? Yes, no issues from Janine. It's okay with me, but I propose, I don't make a motion, but I propose noon. <laughs> <laughs> that might be tough for people. It was, I, I, we were wrangling cats just to get a six o'clock, you know? So. <laughs> hey, Don, who's the new... Um, uh, yes, in Westboro. Yeah, um, who's the new lady that's there? What's her name again? Well, no, the lady's always been there, and she was acting uh, when Derek... Derek moved from being conservation agent. Now he's working for DPW in the town. So they just hired a new agent, and I just met him through one of the Zoom meetings we had with Mass DOT. Oh, yeah. He's only been there, you know, a couple of months. So. What's his name? God, Jason, or yeah, I, yeah, I just met him the once. On the, okay. Yeah. But right. well, he'll he'll be on the meet. He'll be at that joint meeting. So I'll, I'll just reach out to him to introduce myself at some point. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll uh I'll, can, can you I'll, send I'll, me forward you any, I'll forward you one of the emails I was kicking around so at least you get a name. Okay, and his email. That'd be great. Thank you. All right, um, I think we're good to go. So do I have a motion to adjourn? Oh no 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 no! I'm sorry, oh, Jeff. Sorry. We've got um, um some public forum requests. Oh, I didn't see those. Yep. Um, I'm sorry. I thought I sent the email out. Um, you probably you did guys. and catch it. Oh, there we go. Okay, so Southfield Properties Project Change Request. Yeah, I think Joe Macrodon's chomping at the bit for that one right now. <laughs> he's probably already in bed. Let's see if he's still <laughs> up. Oh, yeah, there he is. <laughs> hey, Joe. Evening. Good evening. We ready? Yep, go ahead. Yes. Thanks for copying out some time. Um, you may recall that 97 South Street went through review with the commission. Uh, the existing building at 97 was going to be retrofitted for the uh, new location for Lyco Bio Biosciences. They have done an awful lot of work on the interior, making changes to that. They'd like to begin the construction on the exterior, and two issues have come up since this approval from this, this board. Uh, the first is um, a regulation that none of us were aware of with the US FDA, uh, the Food and Drug Administration, that plant materials um, within 40 feet of the doorways are strongly discouraged. Uh, the spores would travel into the clean rooms, into the labs. Um, would be a difficult process with a new building retrofitting an old building has turned to be a, a real bear. So once the decision was made to uh, remove some planters, the existing planters, and rework the sidewalks um, along that southerly side, uh, we're back before you folks to talk about um, um, demolition, the reconstruction of the walks and some reconstruction of uh, the pavements to get the stormwater to flow into the catch basins. So we have buffer zone at both the east and west ends of the site where construction activities on the sidewalks would fall into um, areas under your jurisdiction. The second one was something that really falls more on the design team. Um, along the northerly side is where the existing transfer switch is and where the power comes into the building. Um, like it made, made us aware that they really would need um, a stable power source. So 24 hour power backup generators in case, excuse me, in case of uh, storms or some other reason that they would lose the power. 
So what we have proposed on the plans are, is a pad for two generators to provide backup power. Uh, they'll be protected with fencing and metal bollards so that there's no, um, no way for vandalism and that there'll be no way for accidental uh, vehicle traffic to strike the generators. That falls in the existing parking lot, but also in an area under your jurisdiction. But it's, it's all like existing pavement, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think that's fine, no problem. So what, what, so going back to the other plan, Don, what um, trees need to be removed in the buffer? Or plantings. Just a, a couple of minor shrubs at either end, the the South Street side and the 495 side. So it's just shrubbery, basically. Yeah. Like, yep. Small. Most have died off from lack of care. Okay, that, that's fine. Um, so that that's basically the extent of it. That's it. Okay. Do, do, does Lichen own the building, or are they leasing it? They're leasing it from Southfield Properties. So from Southfield, right. Okay, got it, got it, all right. Uh, okay, I don't have a problem with that. Is everyone okay? Any comments, questions from the commission? All right, um, so if I can get a motion to approve, this was an exemption request, right, Don? Yep, so the commission would find that it's an insignificant project change. Okay, so we don't need to vote on it. Um, I think you guys Actually, usually do when it's yeah we yeah we do I'm sorry. yeah exemption request no but project change you usually do yeah it's a project change request I don't I don't have the the um the file number is uh, 188-1680. right okay so we get a motion to approve the project change request I need I'll make the motion. Janine is making the motion. Is there a second? Jim will second. Jim is seconding, so Carrie. Aye. Jim. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. And Jeff's and I. All right, Joe. Great. Thank set. you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So 30 Twin Island. Yes, bringing it up now. So I went out and um, met the uh, homeowners and the, let me scroll down to their plan here. They've got a, a, an oak tree actually growing over the house and then they had concern with the um, three white pines that were growing along the retaining wall. And they had, concern, and they had concerns about the retaining wall, um, the existing condition of it. I took some photos. Uh, that was the tree grown over the house. Um, here are the three white pines that are having some root damage in, in, in this area. But if you look along the whole length of the, um, uh, the, pond wall they have. Uh, it's underneath this dock area here. Uh, the wall keeps going up, uh, does a 90 degree here. You can see they've got um, a lot of vegetation. You know, basically the lawn grows right up to the to the edge of it. And they, you're getting a lot of rooting in here. So they were having Pushing the wall out. Yeah, so what they were hoping to do was just to um, actually take out, the, they liked they like the small veg, because let me uh, show you again here. The real concerns for the wall were this area right here. But then there's also a small little dock that's owned by these folks. Um, they, they thought the retaining wall in this area was, was, was good. There wasn't a lot of deterioration. And there was a line of small like shrubs, like blueberries and stuff that they, that they liked. And they were hoping to continue having um, blue to take out the white pines and have more shrubs in this area to make to uh, to make an L here and just to take away the lawn 
along the, the, um, this section and then just put in some filter fabric and some crushed stone to hopefully get more life to maintain the existing pond wall better than um, what's there now. So the, the request is, you know, would the commission consider that just maintenance activity, trying to maintain the existing wall, or, you know, do you think you need a, a, an RDA application to, to um, put in some crushed stone behind the existing wall area? Are they planning on putting any other um, plantings in and replacement of the white pines? Yeah, exactly. So in this area, you can sort of see they want it to look sort of like this. They've got uh, a strip of small, and there's a couple of um, trees in here that they'd like to um, um, take out that might become problematic, but obviously if they can keep the, uh, all the, the little shrubs, um, they know that that shouldn't have an impact on, on the wall. So they're hoping to make what looks like here, all the small um, um, shrubs along here to go in the area right here. So you can sort of see they've got a, a, a line of shrubs here, but these three pine trees are just gonna get bigger and they're already growing, in, the, the roots are already going into the wall right now. Yeah. And then there's a couple of uh, like a maple tree sapling here. So the, the tree saplings are the, are the concern and obviously these three white pines. Um, and then obviously then just take the, the you know, the, uh, the grass and the, uh, the, the earth here and just sort of put in a, a line of crushed stone right behind the wall to give it, um, so it's better drainage. So it, hopefully it's not gonna keep having hydrologic, hyd, hydro, hyd, hydrologic pressure against the uh, um, pond wall and have it keep pushing into the lake. Yeah, so I'm okay with them removing the pine trees there. What are they, are they gonna put shrubs in along? Yes, the, yep. Yeah, okay, all right. So basically they wanna, they've got shrubs right here now. Yeah. And then they get the pine trees. They wanna, they wanna extend the shrubs in this area, but then obviously take the trees out, put in the uh, crushed stone against yep. the, the wall. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then, and then put in the uh, uh, shrubs back in there so they get a nice little, you know, it'll give them a little buffer from, you know, in the lake, you know? Yeah, I'm okay with that. And, and I'm okay with them removing the tree that's leaning towards the house as well. Yep. Um, so the commission okay with that? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, my opinion, but my suggestion would be they might want to get an engineer to comment on putting gravel behind the wall because in the winter time, moisture can run down in there and freeze. And of course, when water freezes, it expands. Through the chair? Yeah. So th that's kind of the problem now. Um, the soil holds, holds moisture, so then you get that freeze thaw. But if you can get the soil away from the existing retaining wall and have in um, crushed stone, it's gonna, hold less it's gonna hold less water. And if they can get the filter fabric between uh, you know, the, uh, the earth and the crushed stone, you're expecting it to be drier, hence, you're not gonna have the hydraulic pressure pushing against the um, uh, retaining wall. But yeah, I'm not a structural engineer, so. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, um, so I think everyone's in agreement. Um, you know, to Ed's point, just have them, you know, take a look at that, Don, make that suggestion. Yeah. You know, it's, it's up to them. Um, and it's an exemption request, correct? Yes. Yeah, so we don't have to vote on that. Nope. All right, moving along. Yes. Um, when we talked last, um, we noted um, on the Lucia project, the, uh, we were doing the um, wetland replication um, restoration, and they had talked about um, uh, the conservation restriction. And we've been, we've been following that along. It's a CR that's um, going to halt. And we've got the final um, uh, EOEA uh, approval that needs to get signed by the um, Board of Selectmen. So I remember the, the, the commission, when the first draft came out, we had some comments. Um, 
but then after that, um, basically all the other comments that were coming through were basically between the property owner, uh, HALT, uh, and, the, and the state, EOEA. So basically, we're just looking to get, um, I think the Board of Selectmen want to know if the Commission have any other comments on the, on the CR. So we would basically say no, you know, we were, we were amenable with the halt getting the CR and they should be, geez. Yeah, I mean, halt's changes were reasonable as I recollect, right? Yep, yep. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm good with it if the other commission members are. So yeah, Lane was just asking if uh, we could just, you know, give the, cause the select board will need to, uh, uh, sign it, and I think they just want to know that the commission is uh, amenable with the um, with the language of the CR. All right. So, um, is everyone comfortable with the um, draft final in its current condition? To just take a vote on it for. They want to have any comments or want to push it to the next meeting to review it. Um, through the chair. Yeah. Uh, I think the Board of Selectmen would be looking to put this on their agenda before our next meeting on the 23rd. Okay, so let's just make a motion to, um, you know, approve the, the wording of the draft uh, CR, you know, as it is. Yeah, we've motion. been monitoring this. I mean, this yeah. CR has been going on for years. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's fine. So why don't we just take a vote to finalize it? Is there a motion? I made a motion, Joe. Yep. Okay. Oh, sorry, Jim. And a second? Okay. Carrie, I'll second. And we'll do the roll call. Carrie is an aye. aye. Jim? Aye. Ed? Aye. Janine? Aye. And Jeff's an aye. All right, Don. We're good. Let's be nice to get that one closed out. Yeah. And the uh, MVP action grants. Yes, right. the principal plan had just reached uh, reached out to me this afternoon. He had uh, kind of given us, because uh, the deadline on this is uh, two days from now. So uh, he was hoping we could uh, submit this support letter in regards to the MVP um, grant application that the town is um, submitting to EOEA. Yeah, let me, okay, so let me just, I'm gonna move this way. Yeah, I'm good with that, Don. That, that looks good to me. Okay. There, everyone, will. everyone okay with that? Yep. 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 Succ succinct and to the point and uh, gets it, it uh, gets our point across so okay okay I will uh, issue that to the principal planner and that well, uh, what's the what's the new principal planner's name again John Gelchit and uh, and Ben also in the um, uh, grants uh, office is um, um obviously driving the bus as well so it's there was someone a, there was someone else that i saw copied on a uh one of our emails um this one that came in no oh. uh, uh no, I'll, I'll follow up with you later i don't want to tie everyone up it's been a long meeting so <laughs> uh, okay is there a motion to adjourn Jim will make a motion. motion. And a I'll second. second I'll second it. Jim All right. Second. And I'll do the roll call. Carrie. Aye. Ed. Aye. Janine. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Jeff's and I. All right. Thank you, is, everyone. Hey, right. is our next next meeting at 6 30? Six. Yes. Oh, uh, six thirty. Right. Right. But okay. The July one is, is a yeah. Six. Just it would. It's just a one time. The the fourteenth yeah. of July would be the sixth, and then we'd be going back to the six thirty on July twenty eighth. Okay.
Yeah, hopefully we'll all be getting together in person soon. So um, everyone be safe. I've already had two birthdays since this thing started. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Jim. Right. Oh, <laughs> all right, see you, everybody. Right, Bye -bye. Guys. Good night. All right. Good night.